The three phases of DMT A detailed guide to dimethyltryptamine, the spirit molecule. Josh Moore, Vanti Media. From blasting off through a dark tunnel to encounters with the divine, dimethyltryptamine, DMT, has been notorious for sending its users into otherworldly places and experiences. Let's start with a basic question. What is DMT? DMT is a naturally produced chemical compound found in an array of mammals and plant life. In humans, it is believed that the pineal gland in the brain produces this chemical during REM sleep and death, although this theory has yet to be fully confirmed. Image credit, wikipedia.org. DMT While the production of DMT in the brain is a mystery, the effects it has on human consciousness is much more of an enigma. What one has to understand is the intensity and dreamlike nature of the DMT experience convolutes how well it is processed by the user. Therefore, it is hard to give a definitive answer as to whether or not the experience has a general order to it. Although the experiences and their results are quite subjective, I believe through several encounters with DMT and information I've gathered from fellow explorers that I have been able to map out three common phases of a DMT trip. Here I will give a brief description of each stage and what I believe they mean. I'd like to ask the reader to keep in mind that these are not absolute rules to the experience, this is simply a theory I have developed in attempts to understand an astonishing spiritual experience. Stage 1, The Gates A good 90% of the people I have discussed DMT experiences with told me that they see a spectacular light made of a vast array of colors and shapes forming in front of them. This light has been described in many different ways. Commonly, one may refer to the light as a gate, a doorway, a portal, or a wormhole. For the sake of simplicity and context, we'll refer to it as the gates. The gates are the barrier between yourself and stage 2. Unfortunately for some, they find themselves stuck in stage 1. Getting stuck at the gates usually entails disorientation, hallucinations, and contact with unknown entities from time to time. I believe that this is a result of one of two things, it may be due to the user's inability to rid themselves of their resistance to the experience. Which, considering the intensity of stage 1, is very understandable. However, not allowing oneself to let go only reinforces the roots a person has planted in this world. And reinforcing your connection to things you already know is quite counterproductive if the goal is to explore the outer limits. The second possibility could simply be a lack of potency or improper intake. Stage 2, Blast Off. If stage 1 has been properly completed, the user is blasted forward through the gates at what some would call warp speeds. Behind the gates, a tunnel is revealed. Within this tunnel, users often report seeing their life and memories flash before their eyes in extravagant color complemented by an extreme euphoria. Other common reports include contact with extraterrestrials, hearing alien voices, and the feeling of dying. What I believe this tunnel to be, is an accessible link between the soul and the heavens. And I believe the further one travels down this tunnel, the more disassociated one becomes with the body. Now in my experience, it's usually safe to say that once entering stage 2, the user can be confident that they will move on to stage 3. Unfortunately this is not always the case. The user can sometimes experience what I call losing momentum. This is when the warp speeds that one is traveling at begin to die down and the blast forward gives way to a spiral downward. But despite the negative connotations that often come with the phrase spiral downward, I personally don't see this as a necessarily bad stage to be stuck in. In fact, I think that stage 2, aside from the come down and aftermath, is the most introspective and personal stage in the DMT experience. Going back to the link between the tunnel and bodily association, the user can find themselves at a point in which they are still connected with their earthly consciousness but in a state which makes it seem almost inhuman and unbiased. In this stage, one is able to directly reflect on themselves through an impartial set of eyes. So rather than the third eye opening to the outside world, it rolls back to look inward. At least that's how I would describe it. Much like stage 1, this could simply be the result of improper intake. So let's do a quick recap of stages 1 and 2. Stage 1 is prior to the initial blast off in which the user must surrender all resistance. A test and judgment if you will. Stage 2 is the blast off, reflection, and dissociative process between the body and soul. You still with me? Let's move on. Stage 3, No Man's Land. The name of this stage really speaks for itself. As these stages go on, they become more and more convoluted and it's up to the user's psyche to decide what it does and doesn't want to remember. The experiences in stage 3 are extremely broad. Some have experienced living through the eyes of ancient beings. 
some recall Turing cities composed of interdimensional machinery. Others report having, usually, friendly conversation with sentient beings such as aliens, elves, angels, and in some cases, God. My conclusion is the end of the tunnel is an entrance to the nucleus of the universe. And considering the unfathomable amount of information sewn into the fabric of space and time, it doesn't seem too unlikely that traveling to the heart of it all could send you to quite a number of places. In all honesty, this stage, being the furthest stage I'm aware of, is the most convoluted and brought to the point where it's impossible for me to make any generalizations about it other than it can take you anywhere. If one reaches the stage, intake, and attitude were all successful. I hope you have enjoyed my theories and ideas. Please feel free to leave your own ideas in the comment section below. Ideas and information are power. Share them, friends. Be safe and blessings to you all. This article is free and open source. You have permission to republish this article under a Creative Commons license with attribution to the author and Thea Media.org. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter to receive our latest articles.